Welcome to The Road to Innovation, powered by the Kleinert Foundation. On each episode, we delve into innovative solutions to society's most pressing issues like sex trafficking, homelessness, and poverty. We hope that with each conversation, you'll be inspired to take actionable steps towards social change. Here's your host, Hannah Rabelais from the Kleinert Foundation. Welcome back to the Road to Innovation podcast powered by the Kleinert Foundation. Today we have a whole crew with us. I am so excited to have this conversation. If you remember um, in episode five, we interviewed Lori Cousineau from um, Wesley Prep and we actually have her back to share about this year's project. You might have remembered that they did the um, Our Common Table cookbook last year, but this year they did Heart Words and they partnered with Heart House in Dallas. And so we have both Lori cousin no and then we also have Christina Park who's also a site manager from Heart House to kind of talk about um, the project they did and we actually have very special guests too we have students from both Wesley Prep and Heart House to talk about their experience that's something that we did not have on the last episode mm-hmm. um, but I want to start off with Lori because you are the founder of the Common Ground Experiment and you are the teacher um, that kind of spearheaded this project so for those who have not listened to episode five which I highly recommend we're not going to go into a huge the the episode five tells the whole story of how the common ground experiment happened but Lori can you kind of just give us a brief summary of what it is and then why you chose to partner with Heart House this year sure and first thanks so much for having us back we're so excited to tell about our project this year so so I'm a fourth grade teacher at Wesley Prep and um, about four years ago it was during the 2016 election, um, we started something called the Common Ground Experiment. And and the reason I say it started during the election is that things were so polarized and people were having a hard time seeing eye to eye and doing so in a kind way. And I wanted to provide a different experience for my students. And so um, that along with an experience I had when we we hosted a Christmas party at um, a shelter for those experiencing homelessness and I watched the way my students interacted with the guests at the shelter and it was just so beautiful and natural the way they connected and I thought there is there's something here kids are natural connectors and maybe if we provide them opportunities to do so at an earlier age uh, they will grow up and not feel um, like they have to stay in their silos or bubbles and and uh, there won't be bubbles and margins one day if we all learn how to get to know each other better. So the first year we did a project with some sweet ladies in a group called the Sisterhood at Austin Street Center, which is a shelter, like I said, and, and we wrote poetry with these ladies. We met with them um, after school several t- twice a week for several weeks. And um, the thing that makes the magic, I think, of all of these projects is the shared experience and time uh, and working on something creative together. All of those combined help people to get to know one another and become curious about each other. And um, and then the relationships form. And from there, stereotypes are broken and um, and I watch parents change their points of view. So that first year we did our poetry book with the shelter and we hosted a poetry reading. And the next year we did another book with another group of ladies from also from Austin Street. And then last year we made a cookbook with the interns from Cafe and Momentum and some of the staff at Bonton Farms and um, which are two really great organizations uh, in town that um, and the interns at CAP and Momentum are recently um, kids who are just recently out of the um, juvenile detention and who are trying to get their lives back on track. And uh, they are incredibly inspiring, um, determined, resilient young people who were amazing examples for my fourth graders. And we were just so honored to get to know them. And uh, so anyway, so then this last year, so the, the thing is we kind of do a deep dive each year in understanding the experience of different people who have experiences that are different than ours. Uh, and we really stud, kind of like dug into the issue of homelessness uh, the first year. And then last year we, we learned about juvenile justice system. We learned about food deserts and why Bonton Farms was the place where it was. And so then this year um, I chose um, to, to work with Heart House, I knew I, I wanted to work with um, 
some uh, an organization that worked with families who were recently resettled refugees because I was just so much in the news, so much about, you know, things going on with people's different viewpoints on immigration and whether or not we should be welcoming and all of this. And I thought, well, we need to get to know some people and make our own, like understand this issue on our own. And um, it's just, it's crazy to me that we wouldn't be a welcoming state, city, whatever, when you get to know how much richer our lives are when we have, when we learn from each other and have um, experience um, learn, learn from people all over the world. And, um, and why wouldn't we want to be a safe place we, when we have resources to help people who are leaving extremely traumatic circumstances. Um, so we partnered with Heart House and we went every Friday after school for several weeks, um, got to know the amazing students there like Angeline. And um, we did fun activities for a while and then we uh, kind of hatched a plan to write our book together and um, we wanted our book to have a positive message for the world too and um, yeah and so that's why we chose um, Heart House for this year so I don't want to keep talking I want everybody else to talk. <laughs> You're so good. So Christina, can you share with our listeners, because we never had a Heart House on our podcast before, and I just want to make sure that we share the mission and what y'all do with our listeners. So can you just give us a little brief, maybe some of the programming, what you do? Um, just love to talk about the mission of Heart House just for a brief moment. So Heart House is a place where we use education as the catalyst to move children from chaos to calm. Uh, we have K through eighth grade. Um, and the program runs three to six o'clock. Um, so in, at the Heart House, we help with their homework um, since they, their parents couldn't not help their homework. And we deliver a lesson on additional like a school project or pre, um, project based learning and social emotional learning, which is called SEL because the SEL is a very big component at Heart House. Um, so SEL is basically a um, social emotional learning. Um, the reason that why it's so important to our children is some of the ref uh, refugee students or our students have a traumatic experience. So we teach them how to cope with those feelings and how to um, communicate with others. Um, so it's very important. We try to deliver every single week so that they can learn those skills. Um, so we have like a breathing experiment when they're having a meltdown, how to cope with that or how to express our feeling to other people. So we very much focus on um, our children's social emotional. Um, yeah, so with the Reversal Press, so that was a very like a perfect project with our student because our students were able to build their relation skills, uh, which is very important part of the SEL. Um, so Wildflower were able to make friends and work together with their um, fourth grader new friend. So it was a very incredible project to, um, to them. And it's Good. a beautiful book. It is gorgeous. So please consider buying a copy. We'll definitely have links in our description where you can. Um, but I would love to start asking the students questions since we have them here. Um, Angeline, can I ask you the first question if you're up for it? I think you're on perfect. <laughs> you're better at Zoom than I am. <laughs> Angeline, what was your favorite uh, moment with your Wesley Prep buddy? Do you have one? Do you have like a conversation? What was your experience like with your Wesley Prep buddy? Uh, my favorite moment was when we did the art and craft part. Nice. Did you like the use? Did you use watercolors or what kind of? How did you create the pictures? Uh, we used probably papers, like like papers, but I don't know what kind of papers. Now nah, you're fine. Did <laughs> you paper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your favorite color? Did you use your favorite colors or did you use multiple colors? What was that like for you? 
these multiple colors. Nice. It's beautiful. Um, so for the Wesley Prep students, um, who wants to go first? Do you want to share um, what was your favorite moment with your Heart House buddy? Who wants to go? <laughs> Looks like Andy's oh, ready. Andy. Perfect. So, um, like, one day we were making the collages, and then, like, um, a, a kid named Nestor at Heart House, he, like, started a dance party at our table. So that was really fun. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, my gosh. I love I think dance I, parties. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> on one of our videos, you guys, is dancing, which oh, was yes. so cute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And yeah. uh, Evie or um, is it Kate, right? Who wants to go next? What was your favorite moment with your Hard House buddies? Oh. Okay. Um, well, there was, um, after we finished the collages, there was a girl named Mabisha, and she came up to me and told me that I had made a beautiful picture. And I don't know, that just made me happy. Abisha, she was so cute, yeah. Um, okay. And Kate, do you have one? Well, I liked the first day when we got to meet everyone and kind of go with everyone. Because um, it was fun to get to know everyone. Mm -hmm. What about um, Angeline? Can you talk about um, what you learned from this project? Um, and what like could be a helpful message for people right now, especially when you're meeting new people, especially people who might not look like you. Um, do you have a message or anything that you learned that you want to share with our listeners? No. <laughs> That's quite all right. About something that we talked yesterday. Um, you talked about how the art to make um, friends. It's easier to make friends. Because you have some something, I'm not gonna say, but you know, <laughs> it was easier to make a friend because you have common thing. And you told mm -hmm. me yesterday. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. <What> a, yes. <laughs> Quite all right. Yes. <laughs> what about the Wesley Prep students? Do y'all have, what did you learn from this project and what could be a helpful message for people right now? I know there's a lot going on in the world and it kind of can seem overwhelming. Um, I think everyone is just kind of, you know, struggling right now. And so I would love, yes, Andy, do you have something perfect? Yes. Not everyone's created equal and it doesn't matter your skin color or what language you speak. Everyone is the same and we should all like, be friends and build common ground together. Yes. And you thought, you thought art helped really build common ground that helped like with conversations and that was yeah. really nice for you. Yeah. Yeah, we spent a lot of time really before even doing the collages, just doing silly things like minute to win it games and uh, <laughs> We had like a Christmas party or we did little, we made Valentine cards and just, we, we, we really, I think that's one of the things I learned from this too, is just when you're intentional about connecting with people, um, it makes a difference, right? Mm -hmm. And like you guys got, to, I, I would say by week three, everybody kind of knew everybody's name, oh, wow. you know, and you had, you were learning about each other and that, to me, that's, and that's one of the things we learned from one of our TED Talks was just the importance of really learning how to do a good job in your relationships. And it takes work and getting to know people and being curious. And, you, and kids are so good at that. Mm -hmm. um, Evie, what about you? I'm sorry, I'm t I'll be quiet. <laughs> no, 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 it's quite all right, no. Well, okay, something that I learned from this experience is that really no matter where you come from or what language you speak and just all that stuff, we can all still get be, get along. Mm -hmm. Be friends. Yeah. So true. So true. Anyone else want to answer the question? Okay, go ahead. Yes, please. Hey. Um, well, I think it's important that it shouldn't matter what we look like or, uh, or 
um, like where we come from, because uh, it should matter what we're like on the inside. So yeah. that's a very important. Yes, that's perfect. And um, I think I just think too, like learning, going into our situations of meeting new people, understanding that we are learners. We're going to, mm. it's not a one way street. What I still, I'll keep, I'll say it forever. Like you guys, don't you remember the, the environment when we, the first day we went to the wildflower classroom, it is the cutest, most cozy, welcoming place. And we got to, we come in and, um, take our shoes off and um, hang out and there's twinkly lights from the ceiling and Miss Christina just creates this calm environment and she, uh, whenever everybody gathers on the carpet, she rings her chime and the kids just stop what they're doing and take a deep breath and sh and like she creates this calm, welcoming place and we, and I brought so many things that I learned from her back into our classroom. Um, at Wesley Prep because there were so many just really special things that she did. And like, I don't know, I just think knowing that we're learners and mm. not just in like, we're not, there's not a one-sided thing. Like we're coming to, you know, be the person to juice. We're, we're coming to connect and yes. get to know each other. And that's the part I hope that we take away from all these projects, you know, that to remain curious about other people. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. What was um, y'all's favorite word from the book? I know there's a lot of them. Do y'all remember which one was your favorite or is there one that y'all worked on? Yeah, go ahead. Um, my favorite word was mindfulness, mm. um, which is the word I had, but I liked it because I think it's important uh, to treasure each moment, make the best of it, and be mindful of it. Yeah, that one is a really good, I'm going to pull that up, I know, for, for people. Yeah, so this was the mindfulness one. Oh, no, my. It is so beautiful, and I love it because it says, M is for mindfulness. May we all choose it. We must savor each moment so that we don't lose it. Don't live in the past or look way ahead. The present is a gift to be treasured instead. When we are mindful, we feel grateful and blessed for each meaningful moment and each little breath. Give it a try, live in the now, tune into your senses, they'll show you how. Take a few moments now to meditate. Doesn't mindfulness make you feel great? Love it. That's a good one. Thank and you. That, actually, and that's something we really learned from Miss Christina and the kids at Wildflower too, right? About just being in the, and really kids do it so well. Right, I know. <laughs> it gets adult. harder when you're an adult. Yeah. yeah. And, but it's so important. And that's the thing I think that makes me want to keep doing this. Yeah. Evie. Well, my favorite word is overcome. And it's not just because it was my word. It's because, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like it's really important to just overcome your challenges. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We all have challenges, yeah. Mm. I see the O is for optimistic. Did, was there overcome in the book? Or is That's that a, in that same page. Uh, oh, it's on the same page. Oh, yeah. perfect. There's okay. Yes. Um, I'll read it real quick. O is for open and optimistic. Look at the bright side and be realistic. Open your heart and open your spirit so when God whispers, you will hear it. You are an original. There's only one you. You we're created to do what no other can do. When you face challenges, and we'll all face some, have courage, be strong, and you'll overcome. Be observant and own each opportunity to become the best version of you can be. And this is what the picture looks like. Beautiful. I love it. I know. I'm, I love every one of them is good. Who else had a favorite word? I saw Andy's hand up. Um, I really like, was it like friends or forgive? Um, the F. Page. Let's see. Yep, friends. And, yep, you're right. Friends and forgive. Why was that your favorite? Why do you like that yeah. one? Because I like like how it, like friends are really important in life because like you you need to like like have someone know someone has your back and like they're your friends. Yeah. Totally. 
And that's a cute one. This is cute too. All of them, all the photos are so good. So I'm going to read the F too. Um, F is for family, friends, and forgive. Treasure your loved ones as long as you live. Nobody's perfect. Sometimes we'll fight. But whenever we do, let's forgive. Make it right. Then we'll have freedom to focus on fun. Our faith and our friendships will shine like the sun. That's a good one. Yes. Angeline, do you have a favorite word you want to share? You like all of them? All of them are really good. <laughs> yeah. Somebody want to tell about the special thing in our illustrations. There's something heavy. Um, well, they're collages. So, mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say, oh. I don't think overcomes my favorite. I think it's abundance because we should all carry a, an abundance of love for one another. Oh, that's a good one, too. Totally. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to read that one real quick. Hold on. For our <laughs> listeners, because, yes, you have to buy the book and see it for yourself. But um, so this was the abundance. And I love the hearts and the barrels. That's just so beautiful and such a great image for abundance. So it says, A is for abundance, adventure, and abide. All these words give us joy for the ride. When we focus on abundance, our hearts overflow, and we're happy to share it with the people we know. An abundance of love, forgiveness, and grace will make our lives rich anytime, any place. Embrace life's adventures. Try something new. You'll be surprised to see what great things you can do. Abide in God's love and his strength and his peace, and the love in your heart will only increase. Be authentic. Be real. Let your true self be known. From authentic authenticity, genuine friendships are grown. That's a really good one. Thank you. Um. So, guys, remember the um, what we put on the pages? Kate, do you remember? Okay. Um, we put words translated into the other languages the families at Heart has. Yeah, so all the words are translated into, I think it's 11 different languages. Um, oh, and we had the parents of our Heart House friends um, translate we, we kind of gave them the word list of the words that are in the pictures and then they helped us translate, uh, which then invited conversations about those words at home. And at what's neat is after we picked the words every week, we were talking about these words and these are good words to talk about, you know? And so there was a lot of, even to me that connected with the SEL uh, mm. component of heart house, because these are words that are empowering and, um, encouraging and uplifting and good tools and reminders for when we, you know, faced hard moments in life. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It was fun. Well, I have one more question for the students. Is there anything else you want to share with our listeners? Anything fun or anything you just want to say about your experience making the alphabet book? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I say this on like every kind of event thing that we do, but I'm just going to say it again because I think it's very true. <clears throat> well, it is true. Before this experiment, I didn't really know what refugees were. I didn't really know what that this bad stuff was going on in the world. But when we started, I started to learn what it was and what it meant, and it made me want to help even more. Mm, good. Yeah. Anybody else have anything they want to share with their listeners? On the student side. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. Um, so uh like before this whole experience, um Miss Kaisno showed us this video of, of this girl, her name was Paisley, she was making a difference in the world with refugees. So I just wanted to help, like like be, I just wanted to be like that, so like the world would just be a better place. Yeah. And she's only like how old is she? Four or five. Well, she, when she started, I think she's six or seven now, but she's spoken to the United Nations and she helped raise money to build a school at a refugee camp in Greece. And so we've learned about all of these people who are making a difference and realizing it doesn't matter how old you are, right, guys? Wow. And, and I see you doing it right now all the time, too. So I know, based on what y'all said, I mean, y'all, we don't need to be worried about the next generation. Like y'all hearts are in the right place and you're just so open. And I just, it gives me hope for the future. Um, so, you know, just 
keep on doing what you're doing, keep on learning, keep on growing, keep on having conversations with people because that's how we're going to heal and move forward in our world. So I'm just so happy that y'all, you know, got to have this experience and what a life changing thing. I I guarantee you all will remember this forever. Um, so thank you students for being here um, and sharing your experience. Um, but for Christina, I want to ask, because um, I know COVID-19 and everyone is still, you know, I feel like half shelter in place, half not, but how can people get involved with Heart House right now and in the future? Uh, for right now, um, we also have like Amazon wish list that um, Heart House kids might need. So if you can go to that and then maybe donate um, or you can go to hearthouse.org website and find out the volunteer option. We recommend to volunteer with our student um, because they need a lot of love and a lot of attention. Um, so we still have volunteer opportunity through the Zoom. Uh, we are having a Zoom lesson um, summer program right now. So that'll be the one. And then if, if in fall, if this COVID-19 goes away, um, volunteer will, um, volunteering at her house will be really mean to us. And it's so fun. Yes. <laughs> Well, Lori, do you have anything else that we um, missed or anything you want to share with our listeners before we wrap up? Well, just if you guys want to, if you're interested in purchasing our book, it's, we're really proud of it, but it, the, um, all proceeds will go to benefit Heart House. So it is a win-win situation. You're getting a really sweet book and then um, the proceeds are helping people like Miss Christina and the other site managers to continue the work they're doing. And um, also later on in the fall uh, that we are going to auction off the original artwork from the book, uh, oh, which wow. will also benefit Heart House. So that will be, I'm sure, promoted on the Heart House website and on social media as well. Um, and then I just think like the main thing is just, I mean, I look at where we are now in the world and seeing how uh, the pandemic has been hard on everyone, but certainly a lot harder on some than others. I mean, yes. sheltering in place has a different meaning if your shelter is not, you know, a warm, cozy place. If your parents mm -hmm. are having to go and work and you don't have, you know, access to the resources to continue doing your school and, um, and the same is true with the, the racial tension right now. These kind of conversations and doing things with young children where we are aware at a developmentally appropriate level of our privilege and of, you know, the, the, um, the difference in access to resources and opportunities. Maybe if we have these conversations and do these things at a younger age across the board, that's a start to me of where we can really find real transformation. Uh, and I'm, I'm, as hard as things are right now, I'm hopeful that this is a time that people are ready to find solutions. And I believe wholeheartedly that young people are ready to jump in and help us. They, yeah. I learn from them every day and the way they treat other people. And we need to be reminded of those mm. things of being present and and ass not assessing someone's worth based on where they come from or what they believe or you know and kids do that naturally so yes we need to keep learning from you guys so that's we do keep on telling us keep on talking to the adults like y'all are the ones who are going to change the future and so i just am just so i, I just have so much hope and just hearing how y'all speak and how y'all you know just how your minds have been so open and so receptive to others. And so just thank you all for being here. Thank you to the teachers because it does start in the classroom. So we need more people like you in our classrooms, opening our students' minds. Um, I mean, Lori, you kind of just ended it perfectly. I just, I don't have anything else really to share, but I want to end. So thank you first off for our listeners. Um, for listening to this episode, but I want to end on um, the beginning of your book, actually right here. Um, it says we're all on a journey to find our way home to a place where we're seen, where we're loved, where we are known. Home doesn't have to have walls or a ceiling. It is more like a person, a moment, a feeling. Here are some words that will help you to see the incredible person God designed you to be. 
Carry them with you wherever you roam and wherever you are, you'll always be home. Thank you so much for listening and thank you students, thank you teachers. Please consider buying the book. We'll have all the links um, attached to this episode. Um, and yeah, all proceeds from the book go to Heart House. So please consider supporting and everyone have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for listening to the Road to Innovation podcast powered by the Kleiner Foundation. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Road to Innovation powered by the Kleinert Foundation. If you'd like to learn more about today's social innovator, please visit kleinertfdn.org or the podcast website at theroadtoinnovation.com.